Colonel William Woodford here from the 2nd Virginia. The Committee of Safety has just sent me over here from Williamsburg to see what we can do about keeping this great bridge open. You know, it's the only land crossing into the Norfolk area, our major seaport. So I mean, it's very critical to us because all the produce from the southern part of Virginia, southeastern Virginia, and northeastern North Carolina crosses yeah, this area. Yeah, water. You want to go see it? So it's, that's why we're, we're working on this. Now what's happened is, is the British forces have built a fort right up here across the other side of this causeway. We've descended in, down on this end. I've got on a line uh, horizontal to the main causeway, I've got a, uh, the second uh, Virginia in, in blocking positions and the Culpeper militia on that horizontal thing to try and be, uh, keep control of this. I'm worried though, uh, there's a couple artillery pieces up there in that fort and they'll be able to to fire down on us because there is a dog leg in this causeway so he can fire on us while their troops are advancing. They have taken a couple planks off of that bridge to keep us from crossing it but I'm sure if they decide to come down towards us they'll do so. I do have a strategy going on though. Uh, there's a Major John Marshall who you'll know later on in history uh, becomes the first Chief Justice of the United States. But, uh, he's a major in my regiment right now and he has a slave, a pretty smart young man. Uh, we've been coaching him now for a couple days about uh, what he's to tell the British forces when he goes over and de pretends that he defects across the, over there. Uh, what he's going to tell them is that uh, we have only a few hundred soldiers over here. We're out of ammunition. We're, we're cold and, and uh, tired and. Uh, but we're expecting reinforcements coming in very soon, coming from Williamsburg. Uh, part of the 1st Regiment will be coming over here and uh, bringing some extra supplies with them, some more ammunition and ball and, and bullets. And the big thing is Colonel Howe's coming up with the 2nd North Carolina from the northeastern port of Carolina. I was talking about down around the Albemarle Sound. He's coming up here and he's going to bring with him some artillery pieces, which will even out the sides. Because we're critically short. You know, in the last three months, Dunmore's been uh, going all over this part of the country, confiscating all the artillery and all the heavy guns. He's actually been capturing a lot of our small weapons. In October, he, you know, he had he tried to catch us with uh, gunpowder and stuff down at Kemp's Landing, but uh, we got away pretty quickly on that. At least Colonel Hutchins with his people got away. Uh, but last month, uh, on the 17th of November, he uh, he really caused some havoc down there. He caught the Princess Anne District militia training down there and captured a bunch of them and dis disbanded a lot of them. But the worst part was he uh, held an emancipation proclamation. He required all uh, citizens to come in and swear allegiance to the king again. And then he freed all the indentured servants and uh, uh, Negroes and, uh, and all of the uh, Native Americans that had been uh, slaves or indentured servants. So, so if they'd come fight for the British forces. so. That's caused a lot of problem with us. That's one of the fears we have here at this battle is that up in that makeshift fort they put together up there, you know, the one we call the pig pen? Well, that one up there, uh, we, uh, we're kind of afraid you may have a bunch of, uh, uh, of the blacks up there uh, that have crossed over and have joined his league. In fact, just two days ago, uh, right down the, the uh, river here, uh, we did find about five miles down, uh, about 60 of them, uh, mustering to try and cross over and, and get behind us. So, uh, thankfully, one of my young captains went down there with about uh, 40 good militiamen and took care of that and kept them, chased them back on their own side. Several of the soldiers were actually uh, put on prisoner ships uh, and taken, uh, especially up in the New York, New Jersey area, uh, put on ships up there and, and held as prisoners of war. Uh, once in a while, officers are, are traded back and forth and um, uh, if we've got a good enough officer that they want back, uh, we can trade uh, our officers for theirs. But that's normally what happens um, if they're not killed or hung as traitors. So Lord Dunmore, thinking better of himself, decides to move out of Williamsburg into Norfolk. Norfolk, in this time period, in 75, is the fifth largest city in America. He has made a proclamation for slaves that any slave who would fight for the king will receive his freedom. Now this is a good thing because in Britain and all of our other colonies, 
uh, out of North America, we pretty well abolished slavery. This is the last foothold of slavery left. So we've got quite a few slaves that are joining up for the king. At the end of the war, they'll be given their freedom, and they'll be able to move to the motherland, you know, the mother country in England, any of the islands, or into the Canadas. I have here a proclamation which I shall read. By His Excellency, the Right Honorable John, Lord er, John Earl of Dunmore, His Majesty's Lieutenant and Governor General of the Colony and Dominion of Virginia, and Vice Admiral of the same. A proclamation. As I have ever entertained hopes that an accommodation might have taken place betwixt Great Britain and this colony, without being compelled by my duty to this most disagreeable and now absolutely necessary step, rendered so by a body of armed men unlawfully assembled, firing on His Majesty's tenders, and the formation of an army, and that army now on their march to attack His Majesty's troops and destroy the well-disposed subjects of this colony. To defeat such treasonable purposes, and that all such traitors and their abettors may be brought to justice, and that the peace and good order of this colony may be again restored, which the ordinary course of the civil law is unable to effect, I have thought fit to issue this my proclamation, hereby, hereby declaring that until the aforesaid good purposes can be obtained, I do in virtue of the power and authority to me given by His Majesty, determine to execute martial law and to cause the same to be executed throughout this colony, and to the end that peace and good order may the sooner be restored, I do require every person capable of bearing arms to resort to His Majesty's standard or be looked upon as traitors to His, to his Majesty's crown and government, and thereby become liable to the penalty the law inflicts upon such offenses, such as forfeiture of life, confiscation of lands, etc. I do hereby further declare all indentured servants, Negroes or others appertaining to rebels, free, that are able and willing to bear arms, they joining His Majesty's troops as soon as may be for the more speedily reducing this colony to a proper sense of their duty to His Majesty's crown and dignity. I do further order and require all His Majesty's least subjects to retain their quit rents or any other taxes due or that may become due in their own custody until such time as peace may be again restored to this at present most unhappy country or demanded of them for their former salutary purposes by officers properly authorized to receive the same. Given under my hand on board the ship William off Norfolk on the seventh day of November in the 16th year of His Majesty's reign, signed Dunmore. God save the King. We also have, with the 14th of foot, we were brought up. He contacted General Gage in New York, who's a Commander in Chief of America, and they brought us up with the 14th from uh, Colonel Dalrymple's regiment in St. Augustine in the Floridas. So far, we have three companies here. The Light Company, little short spry guys with helmets that uh, do all the special movements. We have the Grenadiers, the tall fellows with the bare skin hats, and then we have the Battalion Companies. They're all commanded by me, who is, I'm only a captain, but I'm the senior captain of this small force. So we're trying, you know, to do our thing here. Now, what is this battle about? Well, this, of course, did not exist, this waterway. All of this from roughly where you're standing is marshland out through there in that direction. There's a small bridge, the Great Bridge, that connects the two points of land here and there. This is the Virginia side. This is controlled by the rebels. We control the other side with the king's forces. The reason we're holding this bridge is because if the rebels gain control, they can bring reinforcements up from the Carolinas. That will outnumber Lord Dunmore's forces. As long as we hold that bridge, we hold the colony. Now, why do we hold that colony? Well, it's simple. All of you, uh, if you were born here in Virginia or anywhere around, are good, loyal English men and women and children. You were born under the crown. You were born under those colors. The king is benevolent. He will take care of you. We are here to protect your rights. 
these folks are there to take your rights. What are you going to get if they take your land and your colony? You don't know. They don't have a government. There's nothing fought out. So we are here to protect those rights. We're not here to invade. We're Englishmen. You're Englishmen. We're here to protect what you already have. Some of you older fellows, I'm sure, like myself, fought in the Seven Years' War. We sent quite a few troops over here during that time to protect you against the French. One of your own Virginians, Washington, made quite a name for himself fighting for the crown. Although I'm not sure which direction he's going today. And maybe some of your older fellows even farther back than that that may have come over a little later might have fought in the Jacobite Rebellion, Queen Anne's War. You know, we've always been here to protect you. Tell you what, let's let these rebels know how loyal to the crown you are. You ever hear of three cheers? I'll give you a reason. Let's just let them, let's see how they react about that when they find out most of the Virginians are still loyal to His Majesty. I will give you the reason. I'll say hip hip, and as loud as you can yell, yell huzzah. And let's see what their reaction is. All right. For His Most Britannic Majesty, three cheers. Hip hip. Huzzah. Hip hip. Huzzah. Hip hip. Huzzah. Take that, sir. Okay. <laughs>